So our talk for this hour, or this 30 minutes, or this few minutes, is on a VS Code extension for Gemstone. And let's see if we can switch to slideshow mode. And that, there we come. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome. Uh, first, the obligatory disclaimer. Um, this is a personal project, not a Gem Talk uh, endorsed project or product. Um, Norm is our CTO, and he has to come to these conferences to find out what I'm, I'm doing behind the scenes. So, <laughs> so um, this, this is not uh, official. Um, but most of you, I think, are familiar with Gemstone. Gemstone is an object database, and uh, it has as its stored procedure language Smalltalk rather than SQL or something like that. So this is what, uh, what gives us the combination. We can run thousands of virtual machines across hundreds or thousands of uh, hosts and use a single uh, object space with transactional persistence. There are a number of IDE options available for Gemstone. The traditional uh, original one, the one that's used internally for the typical development effort, is Topaz. This is a command line tool that's very much a shell type um, inspiration, uh, GDB with uh, the types of uh, commands for debugging is again fairly typical. So it is a GUI, or excuse me, it is not a GUI tool, it is a command line tool, but provides <clears throat> all the functions that are necessary in an IDE and are comfortable for someone who is comfortable with VI and GDD and things like that. Most customers or Gemstone users will be using Gem Builder for Smalltalk. This is a suite of tools that is incorporated into your client Smalltalk. Um, we have tools for VA, VW, and um, so you will find that to be built in. These are the tools that have been used for decades that those who are building a rich client application in a traditional client server model will use. Jade is something that I started now 20 years ago when I was a Gemstone customer and wanted to have a tool that I could use directly against Gemstone without having to have a client small talk environment. And it is written in Dolphin for Windows, and it formed the springboard something like five years ago for a project called Jadeite that is um, a tool that Gemstone has on GitHub as uh, being developed for supporting an IDE environment. Sparkle is something that you will hear more of uh, this weekend from Martin and others may be discussing it as well. Uh, this is some other approaches to an IDE, particularly using Faro. And then what I've been playing with and looking into is Visual Studio Code. So first, a little bit of the architecture for Gemstone and why this, uh, how this fits together. We see the application clients on the left, and on the right, we have the Gemstone object server. Um, it includes a number of pieces, the stone at the top, some, um, some uh, session processes along the left in purple, 
and then the blue, the server processes on the top and right. The bottom are the disk files. So what we have is the object space is persistent on disk, cached in memory, and the various processes interact with it. The gem is the name of a process that provides the ability to manipulate objects, execute small talk code, and provides the functionality that, uh, that you expect in a small talk environment. Generally, one interacts, or it is necessary to interact with the gem through a GCI client of some sort. And we will look at that in a bit more detail. Here with the application architecture, the small talk code runs in the gem. The object manipulation is done by the gem process. The gem can be thought of as a server to the application, providing these tools and this functionality. The GCI client can be of several different types. One is Topaz, mentioned earlier, and you could, for example, run a web server directly from a Topaz session. Any FFI-enabled environment, including non-small talk environments especially, so certainly the traditional C model can connect to a C library. One can also play with things like Ruby, Python, uh, JavaScript on Node, and other environments that can also have an FFI to communicate with the gem. Another thing is that a gem itself can serve as the client for a gem. And so you can, from one gem, spin up another gem and talk to it remotely, interact with it. So the traditional model has a series of connections, um, slight revisions from when this slide was produced, or from when this drawing was produced. The application starts up, it's holding the library, it makes a request to something called the net LDI. The net LDI spawns a gem, passes it the socket that it got from the application, and then the gem will connect to the stone, open the repository, connect to the cache, and start serving up objects to the application. This GCI piece fits into the application. This is a dynamic linked library. So in my case, I'm running a shared library, libgci-rpc-363-64.dynelib-so or dll. And so it is the GCI that talks to the gem, your application talks to the GCI. How does this work in a web model? We'll look at the web model a little bit more this evening, or at the end of today. With this model, we connect to the database using Topaz, launched from a bash shell command line uh, environment, typically on a Linux server. Then that will start up small talk code that will listen on a well-known port, receive socket requests, send responses, send an HTTP response. Often you will put this behind a for forward-facing web server. So we will have another web server, Apache, Nginx, or whatever your favorite flavor is, that will be serving static pages, will handle uh, HTTPS, the secure socket layer, and then do a reverse proxy to Gemstone for the dynamic content. Where does Visual Studio Code fit into this? Well, VS Code is from Microsoft. It's free, open source, uh, out on GitHub. It, according to some surveys, and I'm sure you can pick your survey to find this, but uh, 
has been for several years the most popular IDE uh, with 70% or so of tens of thousands of respondents saying that this is what they use. So a popular tool. And I find that it's used a lot in education. The students are using it. Uh, it's just something quite familiar and useful. Provides quite a bit in the way of code editing, syntax highlighting, bracket matching, code folding, interactions with Git, built-in debuggers, language support, and various other things. It uses a framework called Electron, which is a combination of HTTP style technologies, so HTML, CSS, JavaScript, with the JavaScript being run on Node.js. So when you're running VS Code, you're running JavaScript on Node with the Electron framework. VS Code is extensively customizable. And there are extensions that you can create supporting languages, themes, debuggers, code and analyzers, and so on. So we're looking for the ability to start up a gem, provide a user ID and password, browse, edit source code, evaluate expressions, inspect objects, do debuggers, and so on. Um, and I've got proof of concept for two or three of these. So again, how would we go about connecting VS Code then? Well, we've suggested that there is this traditional GCI approach where you load a linked library, a DLL or something like that. And then there's a JavaScript, you would need a JavaScript FFI connection. And that is an approach that I've tried. A disadvantage of that is that we need to provide a version of the library for every version of Gemstone and for every platform that you'd be running on. And so for every version of Gemstone, we would need to provide three libraries and then a way to download the library and incorporate it into the VS Code environment. Again, it's doable, but I wanted to explore some other approach. The simple web model, and again, we'll look a little bit more at that in another uh, lecture or talk, <clears throat> is the stateless HTTP requests. But one of the things that provides more of a connection, a stable, stateful connection, is to use something called WebSockets. And so with WebSockets, once you connect to the system, you then maintain an open connection that can be used directly for communication. So let us take a look at that. And as my machine switches monitors and displays. So I have here um, that is a different, I've got several VS Code sessions open. Let me get to one for VS Code. So I will expand the font a little bit on that and enlarge it. With VS Code, you provide a package, JSON, that uh, contains a description of your product, your extension, the version, what categories, keywords, what commands it provides, login, display it, and so on. Um, we have some parameters that you can set in a file to identify configuration, and so on. Then there is an extension.ts, again, um, although JavaScript, they're using TypeScript for things. So extension.ts is a file that 
contains a series of functions, one of which is activate. So it will call the activate function where you create your various views, set up the hooks, the connections, and so on. And then um, deactivate if you're being removed. Um, we create a status bar icon, login windows, and so on. So I will then go to function F5, which unless I already have it running, in which case I will stop it. Okay, so here's the extension. So I will click that again, don't save. Okay, then we'll try again. I will do Shift F5, which is the VS Code for launch. Um, in order to facilitate the things that uh, we want to do with VS Code, it needs a workspace. And in fact, then um, it will have something to work with. So I have added this icon on the left that gives us the gemstone, there are other icons here, some traditionally part of VS Code, but you can also see some things like Docker has its own extension that can be added. So with, uh, with this, we can also go to the preferences, and in the preferences, I can um, search for gemstone and there's a gemstone settings where I can provide a list of logins. And, the lo and again, for those of you who are used to a small talk GUI, this is not you know, the small talk GUI, but this is the way things are done in VS Code. So you have this preferences file, which is uh, JSON, and you can add to it a label, gem host, gem port, GS user, GS password. So um, I've done that. And I didn't intend any changes. So that gives me a list of logins, one of which is a default login. It will create a connection, uh, unless uh, I was playing with, so, um, here I need to start up the web server that's going to be listening for the sockets. So ll star dot sh, um, sh. And so if I say install gci dot slash install gci, um, it will install things and then start up a main loop listening and so now I will try again logging in. And this time you can see some debug information going back and forth. We, uh, when we log in, it uh, makes some communication with the server. So there's a gemstone server running and uh, one of the things it gets is a symbol list. So now I have a session logged in, okay? How should we display classes, methods, and so on? Well, again, you're used to the four pane uh, columns, uh, you know, the traditional small talk code browser that's been the way, or that is a descendant uh, with a long storied respected history, but uh, that's not what today's kids want and expect. They want to edit code in text files. So I believe we can attribute, is Kent Beck the one who said, isn't that quaint? Text files for source code, how quaint. Okay, well, here we are with uh, text files for, uh, for source code. So in my user globals, I have a JSON parser. And so here I have the source code for um, the JSON parser in, uh, in a text file. And so you can scroll through and read the various 
methods and code this way. Okay. With that, let's see, another thing we can do is we can go into a directory and maybe create a new file uh, workspace. And um, I'm going to create a workspace and then I'll say two plus three, um, select the line and display it. And I get five from that. So I am logged into a gemstone session, interacting with it through VS code, and I have files that are saved to the local file system that uh, then I can go back and reopen later and see and edit. So if I go and look at the VS code gemstone, mouse pad's a little twitchy, and then go into the temp directory, there's my workspace. And so here, if I open it, it says, oh, we've got that open for you already. So I can create scripts, save them, and execute them. So then when we're done and happy with things, we can log out. And uh, then we're no longer logged in, and we see that we logged out the session that we had. So that is the whirlwind tour of VS Code in, uh, or Gemstone in VS Code. So Bob's ready to talk, to talk about it. So we can build up the, uh, the file history. Yes. So now there's nothing there because we're not logged in. So VS Code has this concept of I can create a file system. And so I can log in, and once I'm logged in, then my list of symbol dictionaries appears. And so yes, this is, this is a series of symbol dictionaries. So we are doing a GCI library app fetch bytes and doing a sending the file out class message to the class and getting back a big string. So yes, what's happening here, and uh, I'll, I'll show a little more of it when I talk about the web stuff and the web sockets, but uh, I've got a, uh, an application that's running that, yes, just serves up strings. You can send it messages and get back things. I'm not there yet, but, uh, but yes, yes. Um, but VS Code is designed to support debugging. And so, um, you know, there's a way of coming over here in extensions. So if I went to the logout handler and put a breakpoint in the TypeScript code and then came over here to my environment and um, went back to my gemstone list and did a logout, it would open the debugger to that place. And so again, these are things that VS Code is designed to support the ability of uh, connecting that way. Yes, so debugger. Sure, sure. And uh, again, if I were to do that, and again, I am not, hear me, not promoting JavaScript as a, as a desirable language, but if you hover over it, you can, you know, then say, go to definition, go to type, go to implementers, go to senders, find all references. So VS Code, I would say, is, catching up or imitating small talk. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And so giving people a way of seeing small talk in a more traditional tool. Yes? So this is only meant to look at the uh, gemstone. It's not meant to uh, create code or interpret. So
so I don't have those features there, but it is not just read-only. I mean, I could come in here and say user globals at James put Toronto and uh, display it. Close quotes. I think that's a problem. Thank you. Don't have error reporting either. If, if you do just what you're supposed to, then it will come out right. Oh, oh except actually we're still, we're, still, we're still at a break point in our logout. So, um, so there's, there's uh, other questions? Yes? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely, yes. And in fact, um, there, is a, there is a plugin for .gs files. Some, someone out there has created a .gs file plugin that will do syntax highlighting. Yes, yes, so, so again, my, my dream, and again, this is just, you know, can, in playing with it enough to see that it's possible and seeing what interests there is. But uh, I, I'm teaching at a college, university now, and undergraduate students, and you know, the question is, how much can I sneak into, into their uh, exposure? Sure, yes. I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and that, with Topaz files, you're actually just editing text files on the file system, so you could be doing that today. So, whoever's next is welcome to start. Oh, I think that's Seth. So, <laughs> any other questions or comments while Seth comes and gets set up? Okay, well, hang around and we will, let's see, I'm going to leave the dongle here, I'll read it later. <laughs>